The Colts had a great loss. Taylor Swift has taken over the NFL and I can't take it anymore! And we had a battle for the number one pick in the NFL draft. I'm Andrew, welcome to Dad Bot Sports. Look at it go. <laughs> All eyes were on Taylor Swift for Sunday Night Football. Shocker. Before we get into the game, there was an interesting stat that they spoke about on the broadcast. Travis Kelsey's jersey sales. He went from being number 19 on the jersey sale list to top five and had an increase in jersey sales of 400%. Insanity. How much money do these guys make off jersey sales? It's gotta be a few million, at least for Kelsey. Those top players gotta get better percentages. Anyway, welcome to week four. We had a battle between the Jets and the Chiefs. A surprising battle at that. The reason this was set, obviously, is because Mahomes and Rodgers. A face-off, Mahomes coming to New York for the first time against America's quarterback, Aaron Rodgers. So Zach Wilson started and had a great game for Zach Wilson standards, besides the fumble that actually ruined the entire game for the Jets. No lie, when he came out in the second half, Zach Wilson was electric on that first drive. I'm also sweating through my shirt, so this area right here will slowly get more and more damp. Chiefs actually won, don't care about that. Pacheco, they're comparing him to Marshawn Lynch. I could see it. He's shifty, he's strong, but he's got way more speed than Marshawn ever did. New York Jets have the scariest defensive front in all of the NFL. Not the best defense, but the best defensive front, I would argue. Mahomes had nowhere to go. He was running around the pocket like a madman. I would say there was pressure more than 60% of the game on Mahomes. Again, that just shows how good Mahomes is, is that he can keep up with that amount of pressure and still win the game. They had a couple quick camera shots into the booth where Aaron Rodgers was sitting, and he totally had a headset there. I was wondering from the beginning, when Rodgers actually came back to the facility, if he was going to be calling down to hack it, seeing different things in the field, because Zach had a noticeable jump in improvement with his game. And that's the only thing that I could point out that would be the big difference maker in this entire game. Is that allowed? I mean, players who are injured on the sidelines sometimes has headsets or even in the preseason, I don't think it's a big deal, but somebody in a private box calling down with a headset, I mean, it's clearly sitting right there on the table. And at the end of the game, Rodgers looked pissed. When the Chiefs were finally at the goal line for the Jets for the final time, they went to Salah, they went to Rodgers, both just scowls on their face. Final score, Kansas City Chiefs 23, New York Jets. 20. Next, we head to Indianapolis, where Colts had a statement loss. Against a team they were supposed to lose against, Anthony Richardson finally had his first full game in the NFL and started out badly. The Colts had zero offense in the first half. Nothing was happening. How I viewed it was definitely a rust thing. The Rams absolutely annihilated the Colts in the first half. I think it was 23 to nothing. I'm not going to pay attention to the actual scores right now because I don't care until the very end. Colts Offense and defense come out in the second half and just tear it up. They go on a 20-0 run, forcing overtime. Anthony Richardson had a six spinning spike. And I would honestly say that this is a statement loss for the Colts. Anthony Richardson hasn't been able to mesh with the Colts offense in a full game until now. First half, obviously rough, like I said. Second half started out and it was just off to the races. You're gonna see comparisons, especially in our division, between CJ Stroud and Anthony Richardson just because they were both chosen in the draft at the same time. They're completely different quarterbacks that work completely perfectly for their systems. We'll get to CJ Stroud in the Texans game later. Jesus, they, they laid the hurt on. Anthony Richardson used his legs properly, slid instead of diving head first. He protected himself which I think was the biggest thing he needed to learn out of those first few games. And he's already showing the improvements that I want as a Colts fan. So let's go Colts. Rams 29, Colts 23. The Ravens flew all the way to Cleveland only to drop the Browns off at the Super Bowl because the Browns stunk. It was not good. Deshaun Watson was ruled out the day before the game, and I don't really even know. It kind of seemed weird how they worded everything, whether he's actually hurt or something else is going on. Deshaun didn't play, and it showed. Backup quarterback, I forget his name off the top of my head right now, and I don't care about going back to the notes. Three interceptions. We won't see him again in the NFL. He was electric in college. I see everybody talking about him. But the Ravens absolutely stuck it to him. Lamar kind of looks like Lamar of old, and the Ravens look like the Ravens of old, missing half of their team to injuries. 
Do you guys remember when they had the report came out where everybody got graded and the Ravens gave their own training staff an F? I think they were on to something. Ravens 28, Browns 3. We head to Charlotte, North Carolina, where the Carolina Panthers took on the Minnesota Vikings. A battle of two teams who don't know what the hell they're going to do. There's been rumors flying around that Kirk Cousins is going to be traded before the trade deadline and that the Vikings are looking to finally start rebuilding. This was just a bad offensive game all around. There wasn't a touchdown scored until 5 minutes and 30 seconds into the second quarter. Carolina's offense looked anemic. There was nothing going on. The defense couldn't do anything. This is just a typical Frank Reich team. I'm sorry, Carolina. You guys are cursed with mediocrity. Frank Reich? Good guy doesn't seem to be getting the ball moving in any way, shape, or form. Also, Kirk Cousins is just demolishing passing yards right now. Not touchdowns, but passing yards. And he looks scared in that pocket. He looks gun shy. I don't think he's feeling the heat, but he's definitely feeling the pressure from the defensive lines. Vikings 21, Carolina 13. Bengals versus Titans. What the fuck is happening? Joe Burrow went 20 for 30 for 165 yards. Those are the stats of a check down Charlie right now. Joe Burrow is clearly still hurt, and the Bengals need to get him out of there. I know he just signed a contract, but he is your franchise quarterback, and you're letting him play hurt on a season that seems to already be lost. Get him out of there until you get him an offensive line. The Bengals made Ryan Tannehill look competent. 18 for 25 for 240 yards. And Derrick Henry had a two-yard touchdown pass. Derrick Henry was the winner of this game. Absolutely steamrolled the Bengals' up. defensive line. Final score, Titans 27. Bengals, Trace. Jamar Chase does not like only scoring Trace points. Next up, we have Broncos versus the Bears. The number one pick in the draft bowl. The only winner in this game is Justin Fields, who went... 28 for 35 for 335 yards and four touchdowns. Russell Wilson went 21 for 28 for 223 and three touchdowns. The real story of this game is that both defenses are atrocious. Also, it was announced that Chase Claypool was going to be away from the Bears for the rest of the week to the Thursday night game. It seems they have a very toxic situation going on there. Both teams lose. Broncos 31, Bears 28. The Buccaneers raided the Saints Stadium in New Orleans, and Baker Mayfield looked like he's out there ready to win again. I love it when Baker bakes up them touchdowns. Makes me happy seeing him enjoy football again. Baker's got that moxie of who you want in a leader. The Buccaneers are a scrappy team, and you need a scrappy, motivating quarterback who's competent with the ball. Baker is one of one, and the Saints kind of look like the Aints right now. Baker all day! Bucks 28, Saints 6. Next we head down to Houston where the Texans stole the soul of the Steelers. Statistically, C.J. Stroud is the best quarterback in the NFL right now. He had a 53% completion percentage today, but he still threw for over 300 yards and two touchdowns. C.J. is launching bombs. Kenny Pickett, on the other hand, went 15 for 23 and 111 yards. Fucking yikes. I have no idea what's happening with the Steelers. They always seem to turn around towards the end of the season. I don't think they've had a losing season in decades. Mike Tomlin's not going anywhere. I don't think Kenny Pickett's going anywhere. They're going to do everything they can to help him improve. But Texans, 30. Steelers, 6. We head to Buffalo for the shootout between the Dolphins and the Bills. This cements the Bills as my favorite to win the Super Bowl this year. Offensively, I really think the Bills and the Dolphins are on the same level when it comes to explosiveness. The difference between these two teams is that the Bills have a much stronger defense. The Dolphins are right there, but they kind of got blown out today. Bills 48, Dolphins 20. The Eagles are still flying high against the Commanders. Surprisingly a close game though. The Commanders are slowly starting to figure out who they are as a team, and Sam Howell has shown constant improvement, still making mistakes as a first-time starter in the NFL, but he's making small incremental improvements to make those mistakes go away. I think he's going to be a solid quarterback, and Commanders might have their guy. He had three receivers over 50 yards and a total of nine different targets, meaning that he's spreading the ball out and actually starting to see the field, and I only see that improving. The Eagles are the Eagles, and the Commanders brought the fucking momentum today. There was never a doubt in my mind that the Eagles were going to win this game, but it's a happy surprise that the Commanders were able to be this competitive. This was a great punch-in-the-mouth game that the Eagles needed, and they rose up to the occasion like they should because they're the Eagles of 2023. Eagles went into overtime over the Commanders 34-31. to 
Patriots look bad. The Patriots look really bad. And the Cowboys, I don't give a shit about. Dak is a whack quarterback. Not because he's good or because he's bad. It's because he's, he's so inconsistent. He's great one week and then terrible the next week. You can't tell if he's good or not. And I think mediocrity like that drives people insane. And I would hate to be an actual Dallas Cowboys fan. You never know what you have. They'll beat up on teams that are struggling and they'll fall flat on their face against good teams. And right now, the Patriots are a bad and drowning team. Right now, it feels like they're falling apart. Mac Jones was benched for Zappy again. So who knows what will happen? And the Patriots had absolutely zero defense. Cowboys 38, Patriots 3. Next, we have the 49ers versus Cardinals. Uh, not really much to say here. Uh, 49ers did what they were supposed to do. 49ers as a whole have the scariest defense in the NFL. I said that the Jets have the strongest defensive line. 49ers seem to be a very, very close second. And Colts are third. And the Cardinals are just doing their thing this year. 49ers, 35. Cardinals, 16. We had the battle of hot seats between the Raiders and Chargers. Both head coaches are in rough spots. Staley obviously being the defensive coach, not having any defense, and McFatface not being able to get anything done. But Mark Davis can't fire McFatface because he has no money. Justin Herbert put the Chargers on his back with two rushing touchdowns and one passing touchdown as they took on a rookie from Purdue in O'Connell who actually had a decent game. He went 24 for 39 for 238 yards and was sacked seven times. No wonder Garoppolo wanted to sit out, didn't want to hurt his jawline, and the Raiders' defense played okay. But the Raiders might have something in O'Connell here. Chargers 24, Raiders 17. This brings us to our 9.30 game in England, and the future is here. My child watched that Toy Story play-by-play -play almost the entire game. They held the attention of a one-year-old. I thought it was cool as shit. To have the technology, to have a camera that can look down on the field that keeps obviously keeps track of the computer chips and the player's shoulder pads, but how close it was to real time and how good the graphics actually were. I was shocked. Booger McFarland was great on the broadcast. The whole overlay was awesome. Jacksonville is confusing me. They're supposed to cement themselves as the top of the division, but it still doesn't feel like the cement is actually set. They won this game like they should have. For the Falcons, Desmond Ritter needs to start letting the ball fly. Pitts isn't getting anything and he's open. Desmond's been kind of a check down Charlie. Seems to be a little gun shy. Hopefully he can start opening things up because he had a great career over at Cincinnati and I think that he can have a great career in the NFL because all you need is the same color schemes for your school and your pro team. Jaguars, 23. Falcons, 7. Thanks everybody for checking out week four recap with Dad Bod Sports. If you could leave a like, drop a comment, hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell. We will see you guys in the next video. We got some big news coming from F1 and Dreddy Autosports. Keep a lookout for the next video. Bye bye